So welcome and thank you for coming out to the Q&A with us. And um, we're going to take some questions and he's going to answer them. Um, and I've got a few questions as well. One of the first questions I wanted to ask you was um, the, the use of the footage that you've used and why there was a decision not to use contemporary images against the, the text of Fallon. You mean Arco? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, to me, I mean, this film started out... I made another, pre my previous film, The Black Power Mixtape, was based on archive. Mm -hmm. And 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 after that, it was it was a, in, by my, my measurements, so a documentary measurement it was a, a kind of s success. So I got offered from America to do films in in Los Angeles. But then I, someone gave me this book by Franz Fanon, and I, I went to a cafe and I read the first chapter, and I was like blown away with the text. So I moved to another cafe and read the last chapter, and and and. Uh, and <laughs> Because I skipped the, you know, the middle and, and I wanted to go, yeah. So I was, I'm, a, I'm amazed. The, I couldn't, you know. And I said to my producers, "This is a new film. We we can't do anything else." And I have a, a memory of me reading Fanon when I was very, very young, but I'm not sure about if I read about him or if it was actually a book. Um, and and also, I think I have to say the first thing here is that I think that the, this text is. Uh, partly directed to people like my European people. It's an outreach, a cry to the European people to 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 try to understand what's going on under the European, the West, now American, Chinese as well, uh, helmet or whatever you say. So, it, it I thought it was it it was appro appropriate for me to take on the challenge to transform this non-fiction book into a film. Uh, other works, which is, I think actually is more important by Franz Anon is, is Black Screen and White Mask, which is not for me to touch upon at all. Uh, but I think it, w it made sense. But I'm, I'm the last person being a, a Swede and I'm middle-aged and I'm, I'm really not educated. Uh, I, didn't, I, I couldn't get into university, so I'm, I'm kind of happy I, I was you know, uh, confronting with Buddhist text as, uh, as a 47-year-old and not a 22-year-old uh, university, yeah. Excellent. Any questions from... The, by the way, if you ask a question, you will get a um, text. So uh, the text is quite amazing. So please do ask some questions. I see some hands. Christian. Thank you so much for the film. I'm just wondering, do you know on a governmental level if there's anyone that's talking about reparations in a serious way? No, no, no. I, no, there is no such thing. And I think that's a dream. And, and I think it, it, it's, it's, um, I think that would be appropriate. But the first step is to to stop the robbery and the stealing of natural resources and minerals and labor from from. Uh, from the third world, so-called, St stop that. That's good enough. You know, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to pay anything. You stop the robbery first. Uh, yeah, I mean, t for me, it was like the biggest copper mine in the world. Copper is not like any other metal. It's in every electric devi device, device, and the biggest copper mine I in the world is owned by a s and run by a Swedish company in Congo. And they don't employ anyone from co from the local community. They take Sri Lankese workers, fly them in, and they have no connection to the community whatsoever. So they learn the lesson. They don't allow people to found, uh, to get families, have unions. Uh, that's crap. You know, they could be on the moon basically. And that's very important for the the world to have free trades of goods and labor in in that sense. Super important. It's a, it's the law. Exception number one, you can't go from the southern shore of the Mediterranean to the north shore. That's the exception. Uh, to me, it makes no sense. Either you have to let the resources be by the communities uh, who live with them for a long time, or you have to have this, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can go to Sweden and start to blah, 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 you, you know. Uh, but they have double standards, and it's super annoying. Um. 
I'm trying to keep track of everybody's hands. This gentleman here in the, at the front. Thank you for the film. Uh, fantastic, powerful, enlightening. I just want to ask a question because um, I work in a school um, and considering this film is available, you know, you can watch this film at 15 years old. I can imagine some of my students watching this and having some very different and difficult responses, um, considering many of them are from African descendants. I think many of them are European as well. And I just wanted to think about, as a maker of this film, how do you feel the desired response to it is, particularly if you're young, particularly if you've been indoctrinated with what is the colonial education, which is obviously the complete flip side of what we've just seen. Because um, I, I myself coming across this when I, as an older person has been difficult and brings up a lot of kind of, I don't know, unresolvable in some ways uh, issues or feelings. What, what, what would your advice be to a young person trying to deal with this kind of colonial weight in history? I have no advice to anyone. You know, it's, it's not for me. You know, I think they could do their own math you know uh their response is fine for me uh, i don't know if you can uh, i think um we were having a conversation outside and the way i understand what you're saying so it's, uh, yeah, i mean but it's not for me to suggest the that. way i see the film is that it can be built upon it can be something it's a discussional point it's getting people to understand what happened what's still happening and what can we do the last part He's saying, you know, we need to make new discoveries. We need to establish new um, concepts to create a new human being. And we can get very bogged down by firefighting, constantly fighting this, fighting that, fighting this, fighting that. But this is something that can be built upon. And I think the, the difference between why I would support something like this, such as concerning violence, as opposed to um, the exhibition at the Barbican, because that is quite dehumanising. And this is quite empower, um, empower, empowering. And Fanon's work, it doesn't matter where you are or what you try and do, you're always going to encounter some form of violence, psychological, physical, it's always going to happen. So it's something that can be built upon. And even with someone as young as 15, this, you know, 15 year olds are very, very intelligent, and sometimes we probably don't give them as much credit. That's, that's due. But I think this is a good dis discussional point for them. Maybe not to watch it all in one part, but bit by bit. Yeah. That's my two pets. I think you know this better than at least me. I mean, <laughs> you're working with us. Yeah, definitely. The lady in the yellow, and then the guy in the blue, and then the guy in the black. And, and then you. Yes, I see. I see. Um, I want to say thank you to both of you um, so much. Um, firstly, to you, Sarah, because I've seen all the work you were doing through August, through September, and I was really inspired and very touched by thank it. Thank you. Um, and also to you, Gora, and this film has been incredibly moving, and I find it so honest of you to say that you, you also feel that it's for people such as yourself who may not have a, a, a direct link to it, ostensibly... Um, I think that's an incredibly honest thing to say. My main question is um, concerning non-violence, in a sense. We often, often the freedom fighters who are praised and uh, paraded are the ones who talk about non-violence and sort of um, a very sort of soft and warm way of looking at uh, e equality. Um, and I... I personally feel that sometimes this is almost as much as a, an imp a, a block towards progress as those who are you know clearly on the other side of of seeing things in terms of not wanting to have equality so how do you um feel that people can be opened up to seeing things in a way that this documentary presents violence not as a sense of revenge but as the only reaction which will be responded to or, you know, the only option that people feel that they have left in certain situations. How will you 
how would you say people can come around to seeing things, seeing violence in this way, not as a revenge act, but as an act of desperation almost? Again, it, it's it's not. I think you you know it better than I do. I'm not sure, but I, I really agree with you that this non-violent thing is pushed on you know everything. Oh, you are you non-violent? No, not on you. And then you go blah, blah. Then we send the police on you. You know, we put you in jail. We we enforce violence on you, violence on you because you're not non-violence. You don't confess. I mean, for me. For me, um, the, the other thing, the, the, the previous film, uh, Black Power Mixtape, Angela Davis is describing this, how people, uh, privileged people talking about non-violence have no idea what's going on. You know, it's, it's, it, the only thing it says is that that person who stresses that, uh, that question ha had no idea, no idea about, you know, because they don't see the violence. Uh, they think it's, it's law and order or... Uh, Justification of uh, attack on Iraq, blah blah blah. You know, uh, it, it's, it, it's pure bullshit. I mean, nonviolence is one method, and it's great if you could boycott a bus system or you could sit in a square and you have two British soldiers and don't know what to do in India. You know, perfect. But not the other methods. They could be printing magazines, doing books, making blah blah blah. Non-method, nonviolence method is one of thousand different method and uh, you could say we, we are you know in, when you see in Cairo the, the, with protests at Tahir Square they are non-violent but then the police thought how long how could you expect people to be non I mean it's ridiculous and I think I think we have to leave it behind and you know th there is violence in every corner of the world you know it's not about you can't go around like Gandhi in a situation in, like now you you know I think violence is everywhere um, and there are going to be, there's a, soci uh, a social revolution going on at the moment where people are challenging systems and they're challenging it because they've had enough. This has been going on for centuries and something's got to give and the people are now giving and there's these uprisings that are happening and I think they're going to continue and the, the people that are doing the uprisings are getting younger and younger because they're recognising, hold on a minute, how long has this been going on for? So I think it's something for me personally, and it might offend a lot of people, but I think it's something to be celebrated because for this time we're taking it seriously and we're leaving a legacy for the next generation. So instead of killing each other, we're now attacking that system and uh, it's very different it's very political it's a political violence it's a it's, it's an attack on white supremacy and that to me is a good thing because we're waking up and our youth are waking up as well so i think it's very positive guy in the blue shirt hello hi hi Gora. hi sir um just want to say the movie is absolutely brilliant i love it um i've actually seen your previous movie black power mixtape and that had a very similar uh, impact um, the question which I want to ask is, well, kind of two questions. Um, the first one is, what is your rationale behind this movie? And even the Black Power mixtape, for that matter. As in, what are you trying to achieve? What kind of message are you trying to portray? What are you trying to get out of the audience? Um, and the second question is, from a sort of modern day standpoint, I would say one of the biggest issues in terms of what's going on in the world, in terms of um, Western foreign policy, is the uh, US military industrial complex. And how do you think, as individuals, we can sort of combat that and sort of, in a sense, do very artistic pieces like yourself in terms of creating more consciousness, which is, I think, what Franz Fanon was trying to establish with um, Western Europeans? Thank you. I'm tempted to say I'm just a filmmaker. <laughs> Ooh, uh, how do we take on the American military industri industrial complex? <laughs> Ooh. Violence might not be the right thing. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but thank you. Uh, I mean, um, it's, a, it's Sarah, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I mean, for me, it's just like, didn't you listen to this guy fifty years ago? 
you know, uh, and, and when you had the riots here three years ago, and you say, they're thugs, you know, blah, 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 bring the police on. Yeah, and they go to Syria. Congratulations, you know. You really, really, I mean, we have, you know, if the society has to listen to people, you know, and they're not, a, you know, I mean, uh, the ignorance, the ignorance, especially in this society, I would say, I mean, but I, I, I experienced one thing myself. We were like two million people in Hyde Park 12 years ago or whatever, 10 years ago, saying, hey, take, take 14 days to think about this. Hold it for one second, please. And they said, no, you fuckers, we're going to war, you know. And it was the disaster. It was, I mean, I mean, if you get that in your face, you know, that was, you know, a unique moment. But even worse, you know, all the time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I think, I think, I, I, I'm not, I'm not the person to, but I think there is, with Professor Spivak, uh, in the, uh, in the preface, uh, what she represents in, in kind of radical feminism uh, uh, from India, I think uh, the roots is from the 50s, really radical feminism um, has, because feminism is the only ism that in, f works now, uh, both on a grassroots level and uh, on an academic level, in combination with some, some of the thinking from Brazil and the land grab, land grabbing, I don't say it, land claiming, or, land yeah, grabbing. you know what I mean, movement uh, that connects to the, to the to the earth or to the land, uh, the properties. A combination of those, I think, is the only way I see that things could change uh, for the benefit of all. Yeah, I, I. How do you take on the the military? That 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 those they are what I would consider terrorists. And I think all we can do at a very grassroots level is continue to protest, not necessarily believe what we read in the mail, uh, the mail, yeah, the mail, the Daily Fail, what we, can, uh, what we believe in the media. And to start just applying logic and critical thinking skills and actually um, going beyond what they're presenting to us and thinking why are they invading these countries why are they infecting these countries? Why are they doing that? And not just accepting what we're being told and then protest. Um, I know a lot of people don't agree with protesting and signing petitions, but it's a means and it works. And the you know boycott the human zoo is evident that it works. You get a right to me, people. You get the right message out there. You can protest. And we have a right to protest. It's part of our human rights. Just I'd let you all know that. All right, thank you very much. Uh, really powerful film. I'm curious why you were attracted to uh, bring Lauren Hill on board with this particular film because she's quite, although very talented singer, she is a polarizing figure. And I'd also like to know how you, as a Swedish filmmaker, felt sort of you know exploring this uh, this subject of independence, Africa, colonization, because Sweden has not been heavily involved in that well, not heavily but involved and and we we ben benefit from the fruits of of robbery uh, uh, and looting uh, as well uh, and i'm not sweet in that but um, we are europeans i guess but <coughs> um and and um, about miss hill uh I'm not sure what you mean about polarizing, I think. But uh, we had mutual friends, and through them I knew that she was into Fanon. And of course, we love her voice, and, 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 and she was in jail. This was last summer. She was in jail for some tax problems. And I wrote a letter to jail, and if, could you consider doing the voice of this film? And she re replied immediately and said, it's unbelievable because I'm studying Fanon in jail. Uh, so I will do not only the voice, I will do the music as well. But we didn't have time to do the music because she, she was released in October last year. She was re released on a Friday. Monday morning she was in the studio recording this. She did seven recordings, however, and it was a beautiful collaboration because I wasn't really... She, the voice was great and everything, but she read too fast. 
So I said, Miss Hill, you have to read slower. Her name is Miss Hill. She, I don't know. So uh, you have to read slower because, yeah. But she said to me, no, no, you, know, you have to understand. When I read this text, it's 400 years of oppression that releases from me. It's a, it's a revelation. And a revelation is a, always a celebration. And a celebration is always up-tempo. And I say, oh, oh why? yeah. And she's, she continued, like, it was the same when Charlie Parker and John Coltrane discovered the African roots in jazz. It was up-tempo, bebop. And I said, oh, I have nothing to say about that. I mean, you're right, but you have to go slower because when you read a text, you can re- you read in your own tempo, go back and forth, and, and when you listen to a song, you can play it many times and, and, and get into it. And she said to me, Ah, but people will see this film many, many times. And I said, no, <laughs> they won't do that. <laughs> Trust me, go slow. And she went slow. Uh, it was a, I, I like that, you know. I like to work with people that have, you know, an idea that we have to, you know, battle. Uh, and eventually it pan out. And, we, and she did, and we have did, done uh, other languages as well. And uh, her voice is just beautiful. It sounds patronizing when I say she really understands what she reads, but she really got, you know, every not a single problem in reading it. it it's beautiful. Uh, I really adore her in, in that sense. And, and yeah, so yeah. And being a Swede is is problematic. You know, I'm, like uh, my problem with this is um, I don't have the education. I have to, you know, uh, I have to learn everything. You know. I think um, Lauren Hill's brought a, a very rawness to it 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 makes it come alive i think i've read parts of the wretched earth and it's 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 the translation and 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 it's very heavy but i think she brings it across with that that rawness and you still get it and i couldn't think of anybody else better to to actually read it except her and that's because of who she is and what she's also been through and the things that she stands stands for. I don't think there's a better person to, to read this piece of work. My brother. It's just a quick question. Um, where else has this film been shown and how was it received? Okay, uh, I mean, when I thought of this film, I wasn't sure it would travel anywhere. And... Um, to me, it was necessity to do this because I, I think I had the power to pull it through. And we had 21 different producers, including Danny Glover and, and, and Swedish television and blah, 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 on. And not a single one requested to see it in the editing room. So it was a beautiful process. Uh, and, 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 uh, of course, I'm just one small part of that. Of course, Franz Fanon, Miss Hill, but also the filmmakers. And, uh, and for me, foremost, the people on the screen that <laughs> makes this film uh, something. Uh, so I didn't have any plans. But then it, it been, it's, it, it's, it's a, by our means, a, a tremendous success. It releases theatrically in 22 countries. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. I'm not traveling, but... But in seven countries in Africa uh, as well, so uh, that's good. And then we haven't done the Portuguese version. I'm still waiting to do that, which will open up uh, key countries like Angola, Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau, and Brazil, of course. So yeah, it's it's. But and 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 in 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 Britain we have the privilege to work with Dogwood. This is the best system for. Uh, distributing uh, documentaries in the world. I'm not saying that to be polite. It's true, unfortunately. It's the best. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I'm not traveling into Africa to show the film. I don't think that's, how, you know, I, I don't think any Swedish filmmaker should ever go to Africa uh, again. This was a different time. There was no no cameras in Mozambique recording color and sync sound. But it's a totally different situation now. Now everybody can record images. So there's no need for British or Scandinavian filmmakers to go anywhere beyond, beyond their own community to, to, to record images. And I have to say that uh, even though how, how strong and good the images in this film, they still carry a colonial view within them. And I think that's obvious 
and, but I think also that you can see through there was no other opportunity. This is unique material. And the same thing, that there is a problem with Fanon's text, as Professor Spivak points out in the preface, and I think it's easy to see beyond them, beyond the nation, beyond the, you don't have to be Albert Einstein to do the math and connect it to today. Um, and, and, and also gender problem within the text, like Europe is a she and the man is a man and blah, blah, blah. You know, but you could... You, you, it, you, you you can understand that because you know it's fifty years old, you know, and, and the world has changed in that sense to the better. Um, I've been really looking forward to this film, and it was it was been it was fantastic. I saw a Black Power mixtape, and and it's just really incredible work that you've been doing, and uh, like like this text, it speaks to me at least in like a kind of a peculiar way. Like uh, as an Irish American, like I, I've been reading, especially be, since I'm here in in England, I've been reading about uh, what happened to my tribe in in the north of Ireland, like eradication, enslavement, and forced uh, migration. But then at the same time, coming to America, these people join in the common work of oppression. So this this text, at least for me personally, has like this weird uh, dual dual meaning message, and. Um, and when it comes to Spivak's preface, um, at least something I found um, a, a bit disturbing is, is the way that um, she tries to um, push out the, the idea of, of class. And that at least in Fanon, that he makes it very clear and reiterates again and again uh, the danger of um, the native bourgeoisie, the comprador, and that when we look at these um, countries like Angola, Mozambique, uh, Burkina Faso now, that a lot of the problems that she rightly identifies don't come from uh, necessarily the peasants who took up arms and who Fanon identifies as the revolutionary force, but from these, uh, these uh, native bourgeoisie who captured these movements at the moment of independence or when these movements were forced to uh, make ceasefires with the colonial powers, and and so at least um, I, I'm sort of curious, like um, maybe to go in more in depth on why you chose Spivak and maybe okay. expand on this issue of class in the native population. I I, I don't think I, I agree with your criticism on the class thing with Spivak, but uh, since I wanted to do, uh, you know. Uh, the cinematic version of this non-fiction book. Uh, 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 the the book is mostly published with the preface by Jean Paul Sartre, which is is is, is really bad and been a burden to the book and the idea that he carries all the time. And you know everybody agreed with that even uh, at the time. So I wanted to have a preface and I wanted to have someone who was a philosopher and and uh, could put the. F- the Fanon and the film in context, and I'm really happy for what she uh, are saying, and 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 she's criticizing Fanon and the film uh, in a kind of unique way that you criticize your own film before it starts. So and 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 uh, and it open up because you you have to see, you know, beyond the um, the in behind between the lines uh, also. So I think. I think, uh, and she points out this because what she referred to the Frelimo army was the first army and the last who had female, uh, maybe not Israel have it now, but uh, female commanders uh, with male soldiers under them. You have always had female battalions, you know, the, uh, like you have black, depa- but then you had female officers commanding male uh, soldiers. And they even have a kindergarten moving around with them. But as Vivax pointed out, when the dust settled, these these go back to um, the difference between the genders. So um, um, I don't I don't agree with you uh, in that sense. But thank you <laughs> very much. Thank you, Dial. I just wanted to make um, a bridge between the issues about reparation and education mentioned earlier um, in relation to, I don't know if people are familiar with the work that Nathaniel, Nathaniel Coleman is doing at UCL at the moment um, in relation to critical race theory um, and his discussion about decolonizing 
education, de decolonizing knowledge. And a really practical outcome of that that I really recommend everyone goes and watches on YouTube is Why is My Curriculum White? And in relation to reaching young people, and it's made by um, a young guy called Adam Elliot Cooper, who is at a PhD student at, at the moment, um, and UCL students. And it's about 10 minutes long, and it's loads of voices, and it's in ways of taking this film forward into now and reaching young people and making them... This is about university, but I'm, I'm a teacher too, a secondary teacher, and to me it speaks back to what we should be doing. It makes me think about what I'm presenting to my classroom because I'm the product of a colonised education myself and I have to rethink all the time what am I bringing to my students. It's a really good bridge forward and it's a kind of... Um, someone spoke at another screening about what reparation meant and it also meant repair. It wasn't about money and that's a kind of repair that we can all do. It's about education, so... Raw. <laughs> That's there is, if you're interested in reparations, there is an organisation called INAP, um, and there is a lot of work being done by um, Esther Stanford, and um, I can't remember Kofi's second name, but Kush might remember it. Um, so there is a lot of work that is being done um, around holistic reparations for um, Africans in the diaspora. And, um, yeah, it's not just about money, so that's something you can probably have a look at in your own time. Thank you. Fantastic film. And I really, really appreciated the introduction by Professor Spivak. I thought that was fantastic. So, great. Um, but just, you touched on it, but I was curious about why you made the decision to only include historic footage and whether you have any concerns that that might lead people watching to think that that's something that's over, that that colonisation is finished. Yeah, uh, um, thank you for asking that. Uh, my first, my, my first idea was to have contemporary uh, images, but I was, I was afraid that that would lead to debate whether that specific uh, situation in Nigeria and Delta or Pakistan or whatever you, that would be a discussion about that. So I wanted to have something more general. Did I say this already? Yeah, we, we, yeah. we kind of it's spoke like, about that. Uh, this beginning. is my fourth Q&A this weekend. So <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, did I say... No, so, yeah, and then I even contemplated having a, a black screen with white graphics, you know, just Lauren Hill's law, uh, voice, and, and then animation. And, 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 and But I, I, I think I moved back so um, to the, the oil rigs, the, the, the helicopters, the guns. Uh, they, they are, they are special. And the mining equipment, exactly the same. The robbery uh, equipment uh, is the same. So I don't think... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a trade-off as a filmmaker. But m my, my dream is that people will... Sorry, Dog Wolf, but download this film in, in the future and take the, take the narration uh, and make their own version. Because... It's about a different... Uh, the beauty of the text is not that it is well written. Uh, other works by Franz Fanon is more important, more well written. But he was dying. It's a desperate text. It goes in every direction. It's you, we, they, blah, 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 you know. You know. Uh, and I think that's the beauty, beauty of the text. And, uh, and it, it's desperate. And, um, so... Um, uh, I lost it. Some of the... To me, it's also about structural violence. How do you, how a human being react under structural violence? Well, of course, slavery and colonialism is, you know, the longest-lasting, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so, uh, but also, it, it, it some of the ideas here re re resonates to domestic violence. You know, uh, it could be, and I think that. I think that this text answers a lot of questions. You, why do Hamas, in in my opinion, d throw these worthless um, rockets into Israel, and why do Israel, again, in my opinion, react with that over, over, over the violence, and ultimately, how will people, kids growing up, under that react? in 10, 15 years, I don't know, five, five years. I mean, so this is a text. If you don't, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So, so uh, I'm aware of that, but I have no other options because if I would do it from Gaza today, for example, it would be, yeah. 
I think the issue is that people focus more on where it's happening as opposed to the wider context of why it's happening. Also, if you're not and capable to do the math around this, you're not capable to do it anyway, you know, because we have it on the news all the time. So I, I think, yeah. Fabulous. Kush. This is my um, colleague, by the way. Can we give her a round of applause? Because she's come all the way from Birmingham with a broken foot. <laughs> she's come all the way here. She's my bestest friend. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, it's like a two-part question, really. When you was writing this um, documentary, who was your intended audience? And looking at your audience, does your audience represent who you intended to reach out to? Easy, easy to answer. Um, my... my my audience is like Swedes like myself. I, I have no, you know, I couldn't speak to any other. And, and when I look at this audience, it's, it's the audience of Franz Fanon. It's not my audience. And I'm just a, 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 someone who, who put his text together and with, uh, with images. So, uh, w w yeah. I just want to promote the ideas of Franz Fanon, and I hope it will change the world forever. But if it's changed my friends forever, I'm happy with that, you know. Uh, I think one of the things we spoke about was that when you originally did the film, we were saying it was a very, it's a challenging film to market, because who do you market it to? Fanon is very accepted in academic circles. He's an academic, he's a psychiatrist, so psychology, sociology, you're probably philosophy, you might come across him. But at an everyday level, probably people wouldn't come across him. And I think majority of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we came out because it's Fanon, and we like his work, and so we want to see what this is about. But then I think the fact that you have used a contemporary artist such as Lauren Hill, it's going to attract another audience, and it's going to attract another audience, and it's going to attract another audience because people want to see. So I think all of us that are sitting here Probably right, yeah, it probably is because of Fanon. I was interested in it because of Fanon. You know, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't learn about him when I was at school or when I was at college. I learned about him in my adult life. So I think the audience is possibly, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe this is the intended audience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I'm happy for every audience, but it's not like, uh, you know... And the Black Power mixtape was another thing because I found that m material and I wanted to, to people to see it, you know. In a, uh, this is also strong material, but uh, this is, for me, it's more th the text, you know. And, and, uh, but I, I'm, I'm okay. it's not for me to, yeah, I'm just happy for every one of you. <laughs> Hi. Um, so Lauren was right because this is my second time seeing the film and it was even more powerful the second time around. Thank you again. Um, I just wanted to, I just had an idea um, when we thought people have been talking about what this film is meant to encourage or what, what effect it's meant to have on the audience. Um, and obviously at the end of the film, you know, there's all that stuff about a new leaf and people coming up with new concepts. And I just thought in terms of um, continuing the dialogue and um, kind of, you know, making this film affect people and have kind of some uh, sort of tangible impact and it might be interesting to like see how people could respond to that you know what what people kind of you know how they react to the film get people to do some writing or see what ideas can come out of this and contemporary ideas people who you know can follow on from Fanon's work and bring new perspectives so you know that you can kind of promote that in the film to kind of show some of the impacts that, you know of how this can affect people's kind of way of thinking and how we can come up with new concepts and ideas, you know, and you can really see this film kind of doing its job. Is that anything you've considered? I agree. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, uh, no, I think people, as a teachers and, and professors are key in that, you know. And, and, and uh, we got a review in South Africa that w this was fun on for beginners, and I'm, I'm totally happy uh, uh, with that. Uh, and... and um, 
And I, you get strange reaction. I was doing Q and A via Skype from America the other day, and p there was one lady in the audience like, "Yeah, fine, but what would what, what uh, I don't agree with the violence. What would uh, Nelson Mandela think about this?" And I said he was like, uh, you know, the leader of the armed wing at the ANC, and he was carrying this in his pocket when he was arrested. You know, people have this. So we need to cultivate, you know. Uh, and I hope soon enough it will be like the first reaction when, when violence is wrapped in us. I mean, look what's going on in Nigeria. 50 years of like pure robbery, you know. It's, um, I mean, it's beyond words. Okay, well, it's interesting that you just spoke about Nigeria because I, I was just going to say you mentioned the idea that maybe logic and reason would be a way to continue the legacy, but. It's quite interesting. He mentions the idea of myths being completely disregarded, and I know he doesn't mean it in this context, but the fact that conspiracy theories have become so important in West Africa now, I wonder what, if you think that might be a form of empowerment for people, or is that a sign of disaster? I mean, I, in I, terms of Ebola, by the way. I don't know. I, I have, you know, if people, I mean, I, I couldn't speak for anyone else. I mean, I have no idea. They have a right to think whatever they want to. You know, I'm not more enlightened than anyone else. So yeah. rest my case. Hi. Uh, yeah, really quick question. Lovely movie. Um, I first heard about it through a friend because he recommended Black Power Mixtape. And I was just wondering, because I saw it on YouTube uh, with Spanish subtitles. Because I'm Swedish and no English, I could see it. What's the easiest way to found, find Black Power mixtape here with English subtitles? You can buy, I saw it in, on in ICA yesterday. Oh, really? It's on DVD, and I think <laughs> on iTunes, but I'm not sure about that. You can get it on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So and you know, buy DVD. It's it's not expensive, and and, uh, you, and you get free delivery within yeah. the UK. <laughs> Exactly, you can you can buy it on definitely. Okay, the guy that's who's not, that's something you remember as a Swede. You're free delivery within the UK, <laughs> but me then. <laughs> it's because they're in Ireland. Um, um, the guy that's not my friend, Phil. Do you think that there's a link between, as I say, the economic breakdown in Europe and our? Well, I don't like to use the term third world because I think it's very contradictory. developing country. Yeah, yeah, other than. The development or the emergence of the development, the, the developing nations. Do you think there's a link there, or do you think that's too tenuous? Uh, first, uh, there is no crisis. I mean, people are un un unemployed. That, that's not crisis for the system. The system is doing fine, and the people who design the system, they're, you know, it's just a go. It's, uh, you know, uh, so it's 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 not a, cr a crisis in, in that sense, you know. Um, uh, the banks made a fool of themselves five years ago, and, and what happened to them? Nothing, you know. So, yeah, there is a link. You know, when I was growing up in the 70s, I had, uh, 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 on a daily, a weekly basis, we had inserts for, on the news from the crisis in Great Britain. Strikes, uh, uh, mining strikes and newspaper strikes and uh, labor doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And, and and in Sweden we were like taught that oh it's the Brits they can't adapt to the new technology they are behind they're in a steam age still but it was really the 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 money from the colonies that ended you know no one made that connection I I by that time but now we have another economic system with the global uh, economy and the companies and everything so everything runs smoothly now you know it's like he says it's, it's a smooth transportation of resources. And London is, of course, key in, in handling all this money and, you know, the minerals and, and the metals. Uh, I say it's revolving. And, and you know, yes, cloth, clothing, you know. People think, my friends think, that actually T-shirts is made from a machine. No, every, you know, ev the stitch is made from a needle going up and down. But every... Uh, uh, yeah, whatever you say, is two hand pushes... The, the cloth, the fabrics, through that needle. And every single stitch is two hands holding it. They still haven't you know, found out the machine that makes T-shirts. So when you buy a T-shirt for like two quids or something, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a crime behind that, I see. 
I'm really sorry you missed your question, but we're actually out of time now. Can we just give Goran a hand of... Uh, who I called Hugo at the beginning, forgive me. Give him a round of applause. I'll give yourself a round of applause. And give Dogworth a round of applause. Is it Dogworth? Dogworth. Dogworth. <laughs> and give me a round of applause because I've got a big ego. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>